Let's imagine you have a Next.js site and you need to deploy it somewhere and you need some help. Well, I got you covered. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to deploy a Next.js site with server-side rendering on AWS Amplify. I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna actually show you how to use it using infrastructure as code and using something called AWS CDK. And we're gonna make it so every time you push to main in your repository that's on GitHub that it will create a build for you. Before we jump into the video, can you guys click that like button? Can you also subscribe? That'd be awesome. And by the way, you don't have to have any AWS knowledge to get into this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with, I'm in the terminal here in VS Code, and we'll need to make sure we have the AWS CDK toolkit installed, and this will allow us to generate our infrastructure as code. So I'm gonna npm install tacg AWS CDK. Of course I have node 18 installed so that should work and now that I have this installed I should be able to generate and scaffold out the app so I'm gonna go ahead and create my app I'm gonna do CDK init app dash dash language TypeScript and this will go ahead and scaffold it out an app so we can start adding in our infrastructure as code great so it's done and if I ls here you can see it created a bunch of files we'll take a look at that in a moment I want to install like dependencies first. Uh, we are going to use AWS Amplify library. So I want to install the AWS Amplify alpha library, and this allow us to be able to create a new app using Amplify. So let's go and look at this app that we created. So I'm going to hit code here. And if we look inside our directory, we have a bin folder where it just has the CDK TS file. This is where we can create different stacks for our app. Uh, we also have this lib folder and we have the CDK stack. And this is where we're going to create an individual stack. Before we do that though, just one quick thing. Uh, the way this CDK works is that it's going to look for a, uh, our configuration file that we have already installed in our app. So if you've already done this, you can skip this section. But obviously you'll need to have an AWS account and sign up through the AWS console. And then what you'll need to do is create an account and you'll need to get two different, uh, two different keys that you'll need. So if I bring this over here, the two keys you need is the AWS uh, access key ID and the secret access key. You'll have a file in, the, uh, in your AWS and you'll create a file called credentials. And then you'll put these two keys in here, one for the access key and one for the secret key. Uh, you'll have an AWS access key ID and an AWS secret access key. And to get these two, two uh, key files, it's I'll link this in the description, but basically when you create your account for the first time, uh, you'll have a way to add, uh, to get your keys. So I'll show you. When you log into the management console, if you click here, you can go to security credentials. You can also look up IAM rules. And basically what you wanna do is create a new user and then create a new access key and you'll also get the security key at the same time. I won't go through that in this video. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description of how to get those two keys and then you'll just add it to that, that AWS credentials file and that way the CDK should work correctly. And when you create the new role and user, you'll give them admin access or whatever access you want so that way they can be able to create uh, this infrastructure as code. Another little bit of housekeeping is we need to make sure that we set up GitHub correctly and we need to get a personal access token. So I'll show you how that works. So what you need to do is log into GitHub and then inside GitHub, you'll need to go into your settings. And then inside settings, you can go all the way down and go into developer settings at the bottom. And then you have this thing called personal access tokens. Click on personal access tokens, click on tokens classic but you basically click generate new token, make sure you choose classic. It'll ask you what kind of permission. You can also give it a note, how long you want it to last for. You can put no expiration or just make put it for like 90 days, but you'll have to recreate it and rotate it yourself. The one most important thing is you need to choose admin repo hook here. Just that's the only one you need check marked. And then click generate token. And then it'll generate a token. You have to give a name here. I'll call it test. I'll delete this afterwards. And then it's gonna give you a key here. So make sure you save this key. 
and go into your AWS console. Inside your AWS console, we're gonna go to the secrets manager. Make sure you're in the same region. So make sure you're in the correct region that you are gonna be using your CDK with. So in this case, I'm in US East one. Uh, let's say it's created in US East two. You want to click store new secret. I do other type of secret. I do plain text here and then put the value in whatever it is. You just click next. And then I'm just call this GitHub token EX. Click next and then click next again. You can leave it all defaulted and then store. And then it'll be stored in your secret manager. If I refresh it, here's the new one I just added in GitHub token EX. I also have a GitHub token I created as well. Okay, let's jump in the code here and I'll just make sure I deleted everything. And first thing we wanna do is we're gonna create a new Amplify app. And this is the Amplify app we're gonna be using with, uh, with our hosting. And we're going to have to import something in here. So I'm gonna do new app. And there's a couple options here. One is the AWS Amplify Alpha. So let's import that in. That's that library we had to install. And from here, we'll have a few options. So first, uh, we have to choose this. So kind of nice with TypeScript, you can hover over it. First is the scope, which is the construct, which is this. Then the a string and then some props. So this is just a kind of a unique identifier for it. So I'm gonna call it Amplify Next App. And now we have some props to add in. So first we wanna add an app name. So we're gonna call this Next.js Hosting Example. And then we need, uh, let's add in a source code provider. So you can see there's a lot of things we can add in. We want it to be able to pull values in form from source codes. And to do this, we're gonna use something called GitHub source code provider. And so you have to import that in from AWS sample of alpha. There's also other coder, other code providers. If you wanna use GitLab, things like that, but we'll assume that you're using GitHub. I have a bunch of projects in GitHub, so I'll show you one that we're gonna push up. And it's gonna ask a few things. So owner is required, and this is gonna be the GitHub username. So in my case, it's Eric CH. Now we're gonna look at repository. So this is the repository name. Now I have quite a few uh, GitHub repositories, so let me choose one. All right, I'm gonna use one called store dashboard. I already created this beforehand. Uh, I'm gonna use an existing one. You don't have to, you can create a brand new one and then upload it to GitHub and then use that one. I'm not gonna go into how to create re repositories in GitHub. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll leave some links in the documentation in the description below if you're interested. And the last thing you need to have is this OAuth token and this is 100% required. So you have to have this for this thing to, to work. Now, uh, we could just put in the OAuth token that we had and throw in that other screen, but that would be pretty insecure. So that's why we added it to that secrets manager. So to add that in, we can do CDK secret value and then secrets manager. And all we have to do is give the token name. So in this case, it'll be GitHub token. Now I did, I made it a couple different ones. Uh, I, this GitHub tokens one I created earlier. I also, the one you just saw that GitHub token dash EX would also work. Uh, we'll just put this as GitHub token right now. So we'll add in a couple other things, auto branch deletion, I'll put that to true. And if we look at this one, this actually should be deletion, not creation. If we look at it, it's uh, automatically disconnects a branch in the Amplify console when you delete a branch from a good repository. It's just kind of a nice housekeeping thing if you start deleting branches. Uh, one very, very important thing is this platform. And this platform tells us uh, what we, it indicates the hosting platform to use. So this is a really common mistake. So if you're using something like Next13 and you wanna use server-side rendering, you have to set this to web compute. Otherwise it won't work. Uh, if you set it for web, it's only works for like statically, uh, SSG statically uh, site generated apps. Uh, so this would work great if you're using like uh, a SSG type app but since we want to use server-side rendered, we're going to change this. So you can do this platform dot web compute. And so that imports in platform from the uh, AWS Ampla alpha. And that's the one we want to choose there. And then we want to add in some custom rules as well. I'm just going to copy and paste this from another screen to make this a little quicker. 
But this essentially says, oh, in this redirect status, I need to import in from the alpha as well, from this library. And this just says we're, we're going to make sure that if you go to any other place in the app, that it redirects back to the index.html file. So that way it, it works correctly um, for routing. And then we need to add in a couple of, uh, a couple of other rules, and this is our build spec. So I'm gonna copy and paste this as well and then I'll explain it. So in this code build, we need to uh, import in from the AWS code build. So let me, I'll import in at the top here. This is the AWS CDK Live. This is a library that's already installed with our CDK and this code build just helps us with uh, the building that we have. So this creates a spec file, a YAML file you can also include a YAML file directly inside your version control, inside your uh, application. But I feel like if you're using CDK, you might as well put it in here. This just tells it's gonna run this NPM CI command uh, as a pre-build, then it's gonna run NPM run build, and that's gonna take everything from the .next folder and copy it over itself. And it looks like I have too many, there we go. We had one too many of these uh, ending brackets. Uh, one last thing we need to do is this amplify app. We have to add branch. And what we want to do is we want to, every time we uh, do this branch, branch uh, main, it should uh, start the build for us. So if we take a look here, it says adds a branch to this application. And so that way it'll be kind of looking for this main branch and then building when uh, a pull request comes through. So this is everything we need to get started. This is actually everything we need for the CDK app. And so now, uh, as long as we have this, this correct uh, store dashboard in our GitHub repository and our GitHub tokens correct, it should work. So let's give this a shot. So the next thing we need to do since we've uh, completed our stack we need to, uh, I, I like to do this thing called a bootstrap. So this essentially will make sure that you have your credential files set up correctly. So once again, remember you have to have your AWS uh, credentials. This has to be set up correctly. Uh, and as I talked about before, and with your access keys and secret access keys, I'll run CDK bootstrap. And this will, uh, this will start bootstrapping. It'll basically create some cloud formation scripts. It'll connect up to my account and make everything, make sure everything's working well. So it said uh, no changes needed, everything looks good here. The first time you run this, it might take longer. And next thing I'd run is CDK synth. And this just double checks everything I wrote is correct. It kind of compiles it for us. Before we deploy, I wanna make a quick change to this store dashboard. Actually, I'm going to use next example hosting. That should be a simpler example that I can use. So uh, let me go and see if I can deploy it. And then I'm gonna run CDK deploy. And when you run CDK deploy, I believe it runs synth anyways, but I always like to run that just in case before I run a deploy. And this will just take a moment. Okay, great. Let's take a look at these next example hosting real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna take a look at here. This is a brand new Next 13 app I just created. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna put hello world. I'm gonna save it. And let me just go ahead and push it up. And I'll push it. And now let's open up the console. So inside the console, I'm gonna type in AWS Amplify. I'm gonna choose it. And okay, here's the next host example. You can see it's already running. And here it is, it's trying to provision it. So let me take a look at provisioning. And so what's gonna do, it's gonna provision and then build and deploy. And let's just take a moment and see if it all works. All right, looks like everything is deployed. I can also go back through any of the logs and make sure everything looked okay, see what it did, and it pulled everything from the back end. So let's uh, let's take a look. If I click this button here, this will automatically bring up our app. Hello world. Yep. So it's just a basic Next 13 app right out of the box, uh, using the app router, and everything has been updated. So cool. So I hope you guys learned something. Let me know. Leave a comment below. And as always, thanks.